Holy f <laughs> Sam. Your response to my generalization war video was quite crazy. I I gotta admit that was pretty dope fact. Um, if you want to know more about that, take a look at the top of the description or the info box. There's going to be a link to Sam's uh, video. It, it's it's pretty brilliant what you showed there. I, I gotta admit that. What a crazy analytic number theory fact. But I got something for you. I'm going to rip your ass wide open today with this generalization of this um, sophomore stream reloaded thing. And at the end, we are going to take a look at a very surprising fact. So um, yeah, generalization war, third video or fourth video, fourth video, here we go. You can also vote who's going to win, Baba or Sam. Please be honest what you enjoyed more. Um, yeah, let us go ahead and get started. We want to evaluate this SoFlow Pro stream right here. And this is deeply connected yet again to the integral of set summoned and then an integrand. Now, I made a video already on this version without the T. Okay, it's a generalization. And yeah, where it where our running index went from negative infinity to infinity. But this time we are at first going to take a look at that, and after that, from the one from negative infinity to infinity. This is it for the introduction. We are going to go ahead. We are going to use the same procedure as last time. We are going to rewrite the sign in its Euler form. So we are going to have this one over k times, okay, we have one over two i, and also we are going to have e to the i times t times k minus e to the negative i times t times k. This is just the Euler definition, so this whole part of our sine wave. Now, 1 over 2i, uh, let me rewrite this a little bit. This is going to give us, um, no, I'm going to leave it how it is. I'm going to split up this infinite series. If everything converges, um, then we can split it up, okay? If it converges absolutely and not conditionally, we can actually break it up and rearrange terms. This is something that does work out. So 1 over 2 times i. And then we are going to have this first sum where k goes from 1 to infinity of e to the it to the kth power. I'm going to rewrite it like this on purpose over k minus yet another infinity boy, k being a, a greater or equal to 1, of e to the negative it to the kth power over k. How can we proceed from this point onwards? Okay, you, you won't get very far by um, not knowing what to do next. But it's analogously to what we did before. If you have sharp look, okay, then you might notice that this right here is nothing other than the Taylor series expansion for our natural log in some way. I'm going to write it out, okay? It's not co completely without motivation because if you express the sign as the real part, or uh, as the imaginary part of the complex exponential function, then you might arrive at the same result a bit more um, intuitively by doing a decomposition into a plus ib as a complex number and playing around with the expressions. But this would go a bit too far. It would be a lot of calculations. This is why I'm going with this um, kind of easier way, I would say. Now, the natural log of one minus x. I have derived it before. If everything is in the radius of convergence and the modulus of e to the it is always um, less or equal to one, then we are going to have that this is negative, the infinity boy, k being greater or equal to one, of x to the kth power over k. And I hope you can see some similarities. This is why I have um, basically brought this exponent to the kth power to the outside, such that we can see the similarities here. Now, if we were to write this out, we are going to have one over two i. Also, don't forget your negative signs. Then if you multiply both sides by negative one, it's not equal to zero, we are going to get negative natural log of one minus whatever it is here in parentheses. So negative, the natural log of one minus e to the it. And then negative, negative becomes positive. Positive, the natural log of one minus e to the negative it. And now it's just a matter of playing around a bit more. We can make use of the natural log properties to get natural log of one minus this over this. Okay, we are going to get one over two i. And then the natural log of one minus e to the negative it over one minus e to the it. 
Now let me think for a second how we can proceed from here. You can also factor out stuff one after another, but let us try to get this thing to be a one. This should do the trick then. Why not factor out e to the negative it on the numerator, negative e to negative it, then we would get the same denominator. I haven't thought this through to be honest. Uh, natural log of, okay, negative e to negative it. Okay, if we factor this out, then we get um, 1 minus e to the it over, and this is going to stay how it is, 1 minus e to the it. This is going to be a 1, meaning we're going to be left with the natural log of negative e to negative it. By using the natural log properties, we're going to break this up, and the natural log in this context means the principal branch of the natural log. So the principal log of this whole thing, I'm going to denote it by this capital log right here. So log of negative one. And then, okay, we are going to get plus e, uh, plus ln of e to the negative it. Ln of e to the something is just a something in itself. So negative e to the it. Okay, coolio. Now we can move on from here. The principal log of negative one. Okay, just going through this quick. Negative one is right here, meaning, meaning we are going to have a rotation of e to the i pi. And if we take the natural log on both sides, we are going to get i pi overall. Okay, I, I hope this does make sense to you. This is just the principal branch of the logarithm of negative one. So one over two i. And then we are going to get i pi minus i t. Let us cancel out the i's, okay? And what we get overall is that our summation being greater or equal to one of sine tk of k is thus nothing other than pi minus t. Okay, that's a great generalization. Last time we did that, we kind of got pi, but this is because we had our range from negative infinity to infinity. This time we started at one. Okay, let us remember how we decomposed the complete series, where our k was element of the positive and negative integers, sine of tk over k. We decomposed this into the limit as k approaches one, uh, zero in this case, I'm terribly sorry, of sine of tk over k plus two times exactly this thing right here, okay? Two times this, so two times pi minus t over two. Just take a look at the top of the description, there will be linked to the corresponding video. Two and one half is going to cancel out pi minus t, and what about this limit? Well, that, that's a famous one. I'm going to go through the process a bit. Sine can be approximated or written as a Taylor series. Let, let's put it like this. We are going to have tk plus o um, k squared in this case, if we do a Taylor series. k to the third power exactly, and over k. Now k, and this is going to cancel out, we are going to get k squared. If k approaches zero, this is going to vanish. Overall, the limit is going to be t. Meaning, this summation over the whole of the positive and negative integers is going to be t minus t plus pi is simply going to give us pi. And this is a curious thing. Even though we have parameterized this with a t, we are going to get pi. It's not parameterized. I'm pretty certain that this is right, but um, if there's any doubt, because at first when I saw this, I thought, hmm, quite weird, because if we take a look at the integral from negative infinity to and infinity to infinity of this thing, we are actually going to get pi times the sine of t. So if it's positive or negative. But this time it does seem like it's completely independent of t in any possible way. So um, please tell me if all I did was correct at the end right here. But with this first result, I'm 100% sure, sure that it is right. I'm 100% I'm certain. Now, this concludes the video. Thank you, Sam, for your great submission. Um, I hope I 
a bangy really hard with this one. That's a banger in my opinion. And yeah, what else should I say? Actually, something completely different was planned for the end of this video, but it really doesn't quite matter. Um, just sh 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 short information. I just now did a live stream talking about my master's thesis. While there's this corona stuff out there, make sure to check for my channel each and every day because I plan on doing a lot of live streams. Um, at the moment, I do not have too much stuff to do. Maybe you have seen it in my update video already. I'm pretty much laborless at the moment. I do not have any work simply because Germany. Um, so I need to make a living off of YouTube and I have a lot of time on my hands. And this is why I'm going to create a few math live streams, just because it's a lot of fun interacting with you guys, even though if I calculate stuff on the blackboard, chalkboard, whatsoever, I can't look into all of the comments most of the time, but never mind. It's a lot of fun working with you guys together. And I just want to thank you for all your continued support. You guys are simply great. And what should I say? Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend the channel if you like. Don't forget to take a look at the new collection. I just brought out some new merch. This one's actually quite nice. This is the crew neck sweatshirt from Teespring. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty quite comfy, if I may say so myself. And yeah, maybe sound quality is a little bit different right now for this last thing because I was using my live stream setup at the moment and I have this new Olympus recorder so yeah um thank you guys for watching thank you for your continued support i hope you are going to stay with me and my channel for quite a while longer and i will see you in the next video ciao